Okay, so here are my five rules for teaching. This does not obviously apply to everyone in every situation, but they've worked for me and I try to stick to this every time I'm getting in front of a classroom. Number one, start by doing something. You want to warm up students into thinking about a subject, but you don't want to start by saying, hello, my name is Chris Richardson and we will be discussing the following. Instead, if you get them to participate by doing, in this example, the ultimatum game, popular in economics and gets people thinking about assumptions, rules, strategies, and for me, I use it to introduce Max Weber's concept, rationalization. Rule number two, don't use the obvious example. For some reason, every time anyone talks about semiotics and saussure, they talk about a tree as a concept image, which is fine. I mean, it works, but there are way more interesting things. In my language class, we start with the word fuck because it's so much more interesting. I mean, if you think about all the words in the dictionary, why we constantly go to tree, I have no idea. Pick the most interesting, not the most obvious example. Number three, no text, no bullets, no exceptions. I never use bullets. I think there's a special place in hell for people who use bullets all the time in their PowerPoints. Of course, I teach media studies. Maybe it doesn't apply to everybody. I also try to use images, not text. I know this is text itself, but this is not in person. And I'm talking about in person. If I can have an image and explain it, it's way more powerful than putting a bunch of words that people are going to tune out. Also, what's the point of you being there teaching if people can just read your PowerPoints? Next, evaluate by creating, not repeating. So rather than check if students can repeat what you've told them, see if they can put it into action. I try to get people to draw things, to write things, to come up with ideas, advertising pitches, whatever. It's a much better way to see if people have understood the material than simply asking, what is the definition of whatever it is you're teaching? And then finally, I always try to leave people thinking. I want them to continue in the day, in the months ahead, hopefully in the years ahead, thinking about some of the things that have been brought up. Otherwise, why do this? Those are my five rules for in-person teaching. We'll see how this goes when I go online.